going to talk about an example of Dwight Swain's writing uh, seen sequel form. This is from a book I started writing nine years ago and still haven't finished. Although Swain sold more than a million words, the only Dwight Swain writing that I found, which is credibly called Great, is in his short story, Gambling Man. I found it in John Jake's anthology, A Century of Great Western Stories, Forge 2000. Now, I read it in the big, thick, heavy paperback, which is a compilation of all these uh, uh, century of great Western stories. It was originally published in 1947 in the pulp fiction magazine, Dime Western. And it was published then not as Gambling Man, but Sentimental Gentleman of Death. In this story, is the scene sequel form discernible? Of course, it's repeated throughout. Here's a scene sequel near the story's middle. Probably most of you are coming for that. I am also going to explain how I came to be writing this because I did two things at about the same time. About nine years ago, I was writing this book about scene sequel writing. And I started my YouTube channel. Uh, then I've had lots of health problems. Me and my family, death in my family. Without a couple heart surgeries, I would have died almost three years ago, two and a half. So um, I had uh, written a couple of true crime books, Nightmare in Wichita, and language of evil. And I'd met a lot of law enforcement officers and a lot of law enforcement officers contacted me with questions about writing. Now I'm talking more than 100 and they're not just Kansas, Oklahoma, but from all over the country. Most of them just wanted me to write their memoir about what a great cop they were, great homicide detective, whatever it was. And um, I, so I started, I wrote a 40 page uh, handout about writing. And uh, many of them actually wrote books. Uh, I, I was also giving talks at um, uh, writers conferences and some of them went to that and some of them uh, there's a FBI agent who thanked me uh, later, uh, said I helped, inspired him to write, and he was published. Um, so it's not just local cops. Now, here is from uh, Roy Peter Clark's Writing Tools, 55 Essential Strategies for Every Writer. And what he says here, I first learned back in the late 60s from my uh, ninth grade English teacher. A report sounds like this. The school board will meet Thursday to discuss the new desegregation plan. The cops are used to writing reports. A story sounds like this. Wanda Mitchell shook her fist at the school board chairman, tears streaming down her face. Stories you write in scene sequel form. I'm greatly abbreviating what's in my book. There are three different types of scene sequel writing, which I reach before I reach Dwight Swain's. So, uh, <clears throat> Dwight Swain's greatest writing. Okay. Goal, conflict, disaster. The scene in Swain's method. And in this story, in the old American West, circa 1870, Mr. Devereaux, a cowboy, 
the Gambling Man of the revised title, uh, wants only to testify against the accused at the accused murderer at the trial, collect his twenty dollars, which he's being paid to testify against this gang leader murderer. And then Devereaux wants to just mount his house right out of town. He believes the trial will be a brief formality. Before entering the courtroom, Devereaux puts his Colt revolver under his coat and his Derringer under his hat. So that's his goal. Just wants to testify, get his $20, get out of town. Conflict. When the accused murderer, Alonzo Park, begins testifying in his own defense, Park's criminal gang begins shouting approvals, swearing he's telling the truth. The judge is a town's barber who has just been appointed judge and is completely out of his element. The accused claims the crime was committed by Mr. Devereaux, not himself. Park's innocent. Park's gang shouts that's the truth. More, Alonzo Park produces a book that claims Mr. Devereaux is himself wanted for being a card cheat and murderer. Devereaux should be in custody, not him. Oh my. Where is this conflict going to? Disaster. The judge is persuaded by Park. He dismisses the case against Park and orders the town marshal to take Devereaux into custody. Well, now it's that's a disaster. It's completely against what... Uh, Devereaux's goal was an expectation. Now the reader knows Park's guilty and Devereaux's a hero. So the reaction. Devereaux permits his Colt revolver to be taken from him, but they don't check, check his hat, so he still has a derringer. He notes the weather now matches his situation. The wind whipping through town, Clouds of dust have obscured the setting sun. It was light, but now all is darkness. Swain does a good job of that in his writing. Uh, dilemma. As the marshal marches him to the town jail, Devereaux tries to reason his way to freedom. He and the marshal have a discussion. Marshall considers Devereaux several claims, and the Marshall thinks the barber judge is an idiot. But the Marshall insists that he must hold Devereaux in custody overnight. Devereaux believes he will be killed by Alonzo Park and his gang if he permits himself to be locked in this jail. Now, about to enter jail, just step away because... He is unable to persuade the marshal with words. He must look to an alternative. Decision. Devereaux decides to quickly pull his derringer from his hat and shoot the marshal in his gun arm. That's a decision. That's not the action. The action occurs in the next scene sequel where he uh, you know, the goal is repeats, goal, conflict. He's uh, shooting the marshal in the arm while the marshal's trying to shoot him, um, and so forth. The same sequels continue until the end of the story. Dwight Swain did write this way in 1947, but that's actually kind of a confounding issue. Swain started teaching this form because it's simpler than all three of the previous forms of scene sequel writing. It's not always the best. While there is Campbell, you don't always have to have a disaster. 
Um, and I've talked about that in, in earlier uh, videos, and it uh, will be in my book if I live long enough to finish it. So, um, uh, this is, this can be, St. Sequel writing can be very helpful, which is why I started teaching the, uh, the old cops. Usually they were retired by the time they wanted to write, and they originally wanted to write a nonfiction book, or have one written about them, about what a great cop they were. Then they started telling me stories about, eh, stuff they didn't want their wife and children to know. I said, well, you can rewrite that as fiction. And they, oh yeah, okay, let's do that. And that's when I would end up, you know, they would write a report. And I said, well, you need to change this into a story or a series of stories. And here's one way to structure your story, uh, the scene sequel writing. So uh, that's where, that's why I ended up working on this. Uh, and I hope I finish um, the book. Um, um, and I'll let you know if I ever do.